ago to come and share this information with you. So um, I'm going to welcome that. Hi, everybody. I'm going to give you a story of warning here. Uh, on December 6th, 2013, I had something happen. Um, every parent's worst nightmare that late night phone call. It was shortly after midnight, and both mine and my wife's phone rang at the same time. I've had a lot of late night phone calls, and they turned out to be butt calls, and you hear the music in the background and all this, but when both phones rang at once, yeah, I knew it wasn't that kind of situation. It was each of my sons calling because they wanted to make sure they got hold of us. They had just gotten a call from my daughter's best friend, Ryan Toddy, that my beautiful daughter, Mallory Ray Dyes, had been struck as a pedestrian and was in very critical condition in Cottage Hospital in Santa Barbara. Um, at that point, Ray and I grabbed coats and keys, hopped in the car. We live out in Corona, out near Riverside, so it's, it's a long drive up to Santa Barbara. The most horrible long drive you, you can imagine. There were multiple calls from the hospital saying, how far away are you? I'm trying to keep my wife calm. Meanwhile, I'm freaking out and devastated inside. Because I know the hospital isn't, gosh, gosh we want to see you. They're saying, how long? When are you going to be here? It, it's telling me that they don't know if Mallory's going to make it through the next hour. And I'm trying the best to keep from driving 150 miles an hour, trying to keep the car on the road. Everything in my mind is going a zillion miles an hour. We get out there. Uh, my two sons had, had made it. They lived in, lived in Costa Mesa at the time. They had made it out there. Um, our friend Toddy was there. Her boyfriend Landon was there in the hospital. We all got to sit together and wait for the, the doctor to come out. Dr. Ferrero came out and told us that there was severe head trauma. Um, and I guess what I should maybe tell you a little bit about Mallory. She was four-year double major, okay? Um, honors from high school, cheerleader, popular, smart, tons of friends, and like I said, did a, a double major in four all the UCSB, which is not easy to do. So we're talking about a magnificent brain. And the doctor tells us on the 15-point scale, one being the worst, she's a three. So it's just like getting kicked in the head. I just, I'm terrified. And the days go on, and she makes it through the first 24 hours. And it's this roller coaster of emotions where we get some little bit of good news and we're pinning our hopes and prayers to that. And then things will go back down again. And it was like that. Hour to hour, day to day. And, you know, we, we're taking hope from it. Well, she made it through 24 hours, so that's a good sign, right? <clears throat> right? 48 hours, and we're thinking, okay, this is going to come out okay. I learned what one of the friends called, we had the five-day um, medical course. And, you know, like becoming a doctor in five days. I learned about blood circulation in the brain. I learned that because the impact was so great that when the head snapped back, both carotid arteries were damaged, okay? You have four arteries that feed your brain, the carotids in the front and the ventricles in the back. Because these were so damaged, limited blood got up to Mallory's brain. The ventrioles took over, but even though the initial trauma she seemed to be recovering from, there was stroke from the lack of blood to the brain. After five days, they did what's called a neurological test. They took her off the substance coma. And I'm a realist. I knew how bad the brain damage was. And I knew my Mallory never wanted to be a vegetable. 
And so I whispered to her, this is one test. I don't want you to pass. Okay. And she listened to Dad and made no response, no breath, no swallow, no response like that. So she was declared brain dead on December 11th, 2013. Two days after my 55th birthday, by the way, which has been bedside. And so I got to go down and break that news to the hundreds of friends that had been inundating the hospital and overwhelming the staff for several days. So she was uh, an organ donor, so was kept, the vessel was kept alive for the next several days. Um, on December 14th, late at night, my wife and I walked her down to surgery, and I'm thinking, no, I should be walking you down an aisle. Five lives were saved. A 47-year-old father, 28-year-old father of two, an 18-year-old girl, and a two-year-old and a five-year-old from organ donation. And I take some solace in that. But I never get to see her. I never get to hear her laugh again. Mama never gets to hold a grandbaby from me. And all because someone selfishly decided it was more convenient for them to get the car home and put other people at risk. Um, <clears throat> was this guy a horrible, horrible person? No, he was actually a congressional aide working for Lois Capps, uh, an Iraqi war veteran who was trying to do good in the community. But he brought back damage from overseas. And <clears throat> like many a veteran fighting PTSD, self-medicated with alcohol um, and this night he'd had over eight drinks that we know about documented on on receipts <clears throat> and got in the car with a 1.8 was driving in a 30 mile an hour zone at 58 miles per hour uh, hit Mallory backed up looked at her drove off. Um, fortunately, a young man named Devin, who was acting, actually acting as a designated driver that night, had seen what happened, followed him. Uh, the driver ducked into some storage yard to try and hide out. Devin yelled something. He came driving straight at Devin, who hopped out of the way, hopped back in his car, uh, followed this guy until he crashed near Storm's, Storm's Wharf in Santa Barbara and was then arrested. Um, the next morning he actually found out what he did. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the reason I'm here today, I don't want yours or yours or yours or your, I don't want your parents to get that goddamn phone call. <coughs> if I can save one family from what we've gone through, you can see this isn't easy for me. I'll get up and do this a thousand times. If I can save one family from the pain we went through. And when I say family, she had a, another family. She had a Santa Barbara family, which is what got us started on Vow for Man. And it, that vow is taking a vow never to drink and drive. It's what these wristbands are about, what your teacher's sticker is about. And we have some of these things to give out to you guys. And I just can't emphasize enough. It, if it's you're at a party and your friend and he's walking to the car and he's drunk, you can do Mike's trick. Oh, that's a cool keychain. Let me see that. Boom, chuck it up on the roof. Okay? And, like, ah, ah, ah. and you know what? The next day he's gonna call and go, bro, thanks man. I was way too pardon my friend, I was way too shitty to drive. I can't believe I was gonna try to drive that night. Whatever it takes, keep yourself and your friends from either A being the victim or B, being the perpetrator. The guy driving that car, he's doing 20 hard, has to face 85% in Wasco State Prison right now, okay? Because he decided to get in his car that night. 
I lost a daughter. The other family essentially lost a son because the greater part, he was 32 years old, the greater part of his productive life is going to be spent in a jumpsuit. Okay? And this was a young man that had a bright future, just like my daughter had a bright future. And he pissed it away because he, I, it's not that far, you know, God, we all know all the darn excuses. I'm not that drunk, it's not that far, I drive it all the time, I've done this a hundred times. Whatever BS excuse, that's all they are, the BS excuses. And it's a callous, selfish act <clears throat> to drink and drive, because what you're saying is, I care more about my convenience than I care about other people. And that's really what it comes down to. I have to be at work in the morning, whatever the, whatever the reason is, it's just saying, I care more about me than anybody else. I don't care about you or your friends or your brother or your sister, your mom, your dad, your little sister, your big brother, whoever it is. I don't care about them because, hey, I got things to do. I got places to be. I'm important. You all don't matter. That's why our slogan is show love, save lives. Because if you are a loving person, you don't do this. You don't play that Russian roulette with other people's lives if you are a loving person. So what we've done in Valfamal is we try to get the word out about making good, safe decisions. We are not the women's Christian temperance movement. We're not gonna, we, we don't want to bring back the Volstead Act, okay? 